wasn't great for Britain. The three hundred and fifty million pound a week is, is just nowhere. And now no one talks about it, John. That's that. I mean, is that not weird? Despite the elephant in the room, the damage of Brexit to the UK economy, it's been quite strange seeing that the general election and the political parties of the UK have been ignoring the damage of Brexit. However, Matthew Wright from LBC changed that. Have a listen. I understand why they should talk about Brexit. We won, and that's it. And oh. Michael Hazel Hazeltine lost. And he's still bitter about Do you remember, it. do you remember the original Brexit and referendum, the original it. EU referendum that we won, the of Remainers won, but you carried on talking about it for the next 30, 40 years until it changed. Bit rich to say that the other side can't, isn't it? It's almost as if they want us to suspend democracy and not talk about Brexit. And this is an old age argument you seem to be hearing from Brexiteers. Don't talk about it. However, Ian Hislop wasn't going to take that and said it very succinctly in BBC Question Time. After um, an election or a referendum, even if you lose the vote, you are entitled to go on making the argument. When a government... <laughs> when a government in this country wins an election, the opposition does not just say, oh, that's absolutely right, I've got nothing to say for five years. <laughs> Because the winners don't talk. You lost, Hazeltine lost, they talk about it. No, you just, you've just brilliantly ignored my question, won't. Olga. That, 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 why didn't you shut up about Brexit when we had the first referendum? And it's a great point. The referendum that he's referring to is from 1973, where the UK joined the EEC. And the general argument you'll hear from Brexiteers is, oh, it's not the same as the EU. Not true. The principles, the founding principles of the EEC and the European Union are very similar. Here's Article 2 of the EEC Treaty, which the British voted for in a referendum, in simpler language. A. Getting rid of customs duties and restrictions on importing and exporting goods between member countries and eliminating other similar barriers. B. Creating a shared customs tariff and a unified trade policy for dealing with non-member countries. C. Removing barriers between member countries so people, services and money can move freely. D. Developing common policies for agriculture and transport. E. Setting up a system to ensure that competition in the common market is fair. And if you read the preamble, it clearly states that the point of the EEC is to bring everyone closer together. Why do people carry on saying, oh, we don't like this because we've got to live in a free country and we challenge it? Now we know what Brexit is, which is a load of lies that's costing us a fortune. Why shouldn't we discuss it? Cost who my fortune? It's, I think it's, cost, it's not cost me a fortune. It's, I benefited a lot. Well, I'm sure... Debt collectors benefited. Removal companies taking people back to the EU benefited quite a bit. People betting against the pound in the referendum benefited quite a bit. And all the legal services that benefited quite a bit because they had to now do paperwork for people to stay in the UK. Oh, well, as long as you've benefited, who cares if every family in the country is a £1,000 worse off? And according to the report done by the London Mayor's office, some families are actually out by £2,000 a year. And when you look at some of the leave adverts, it wasn't saying that at all. In fact, it was saying by now we should all be wealthier. But of course, no one brings that up with reform or Brexiteers or Nigel Farage. No one benefited for it. No, sorry. No one messed it off. It's all propaganda. This was going oh, before Brexit. It's all the no office. The office of budget just, responsibility yeah. is a is a propagandist, pro EU propagandist organisation. Olga, Olga. The Office of Budget Responsibility, the group that are literally there to ensure that there is a solid understanding of the money available to government, are making this up. It's mind-blowing the level of cult-like, mind-bending stuff that goes on with people who love Brexit. Listen to yourself. You sound like Donald Trump. Listen to yourself. <laughs> what a burn. But of course, fake news, fake news. And Matthew wasn't finished there and being absolutely scathing about Brexit. I mean, you're not alone in saying just leave it be, leave it be. But my point is, well, they didn't really happen very loudly in the 70s. By the late 80s into the early 90s, whole swathes of politicians did nothing but talk about why they hated the EU, despite the fact we'd had a referendum that was overwhelmingly in support of joining Project Europe. And they never shut up, so why should those who lost at the last referendum shut up now? It doesn't make any sense. If they'd shut up, we'd probably not be having this discussion because we wouldn't have had a referendum. But because they didn't shut up, it's a bit rich to expect everybody on the losing side to button it because they lost by 1.8%, isn't it? Yeah, no, there is a, a balanced argument to be made, but I just think the whole thing, looking back retrospectively, going through Brexit, we got sold a pup, and all the people that seem to be telling us one thing, they did the opposite. And 
boy did they do the opposite. They were offering two things at the same time. Have a listen to this. Should we come out the single market? I think that that is almost certainly would be the case, yes. Do you want us to stay inside the single market, yes or no? No, we should be outside the single market. I had uh, Michael Gove in that chair and I said, after Brexit, will we be in the European single market, yes or no? And he said, no. And he was right. We not only, we not only, we not only, we're not only, we are, we will remain a, a, a paid up, a paid up, valued, participating member of the single market. That we could leave the EU, we could, which will mean, because you've made a big song and dance about it, ending free movement of peoples, that would not apply to the United Kingdom, but we would still access the single market on the same basis as we do now? We would continue to trade tariff-free because it's in their interest. But when we have a free trade area extending from Iceland to the Russian border, that we're going to be outside it is nonsense. It's for the birds. When you listen to those comments, it sounds like nothing's going to change and it's all part of Project Fear and that the government is just trying to scare you into the damage that could be caused by leaving the EU. But isn't it interesting that they're saying two completely opposite things on TV? We're not in the single market, but we'll have the benefits of the single market. Lies, lies, lies. Now, one of the most interesting things that have come out of this interview, the guy is saying that he's from Sunderland, that he would normally vote Labour, but if they don't change course on Brexit, he's going to start looking elsewhere to vote. And it's part of the reason we believe that Starmer is going in this direction of don't talk about Brexit, make Brexit work, because he thinks it's a vote loser. Have a listen. Heseltine says, and I don't disbelieve him, that you can't discuss almost anything in the UK today, any problem area, without it being, without looking at it in the, in the wider context of our decision to leave the European Union, from the quality of our water... Uh, to, to moving around. And, and if no one talks about it, then we're never going to be able to address those issues. John, lovely talking to you. Your thoughts on the absence of Brexit from this election? Well, I mean, Starmer doesn't really want to talk about it because no. he doesn't want to alienate any of this Red Wall uh, Brigade. But it is dishonest not to see that the, the damage it's done in the in the run-up to the election. I mean, I, I've voted Labour last time and I mean, I'm seriously consider, considering not voting for them this time because of the lack of uh, chat about it. So this is really interesting because the this is exactly the argument, isn't it? Is that that Labour feels they can't talk about it because they will lose precious votes in precious previous red wall seats, and here we are talking to a gentleman who may not vote Labour from Sunderland, so some red wallish area. Um, and, and, and you're threatening not to vote Labour because they won't talk about it. And I, and I wonder how many polls there are out there, sir. I really do. I think, I think there'll be quite a few. And it wasn't just LBC. Piers Morgan on BBC Question Time went straight at Nigel Farage about Brexit and having another revote. And if you listen very carefully, you'll hear Nigel's response to having another referendum. And eight years later, we have lost complete control of our borders both legal and illegal uh, immigration. And economically, it seems to have been a willful act of self-harm. And one of the main architects of Brexit is sitting here, yeah. who could have run to stand yeah. as a member of parliament in this election, but has chosen not to because he wants to go and help Donald Trump be elected in America. It might also be down to the fact that he's lost seven times, including to a dolphin. <laughs> but I would like to ask Nigel Farage, yeah. What objection would you have, given that all the polls now say the majority of this country would actually vote the other way if there was another referendum, what objection would you have to just testing that theory I'd and like allowing the British... Thanks, Piers, for your big, fat mouth talking over someone. Shock. It would have been nice to have heard that, but I think he did say, I would love it. ..people to decide whether well, they were sold a complete pack of nonsense. What would be lovely... We get back to the question. People vote for Brexit? Well, there were lots of reasons. Getting back control of our lives was the main one. Our, you know, we'd gone from the late 1940s until 1997 with net migration of 30 to 40,000 a year over the course of 50 years. Under the Conservatives, that has just accelerated and continued. What about Brexit, Piers, was it gives us total control over who can come and live in our country. No where, control. Where, yes, we That's have, the whole point. No, we do have total control. But we have a government 
that have willfully, willfully got us to vote for them in 2019, and I helped them with that by standing aside in the general election, and they have willfully ignored the wishes of the people. Which is exactly what Nigel's doing right now. The will of the people is go back into the EU because this was a really stupid idea. Betrayed Brexit voters. Betrayed Brexit voters. This guy lied to all of you about all sorts of things to get Brexit over the line. So the UKIP answer is this. There is absolutely nothing to fear in terms of trade from leaving the European Union because on D plus one, we'll find ourselves part of the European economic area and with a free trade deal. And we should use our membership of the EEA as a holding position from which we can negotiate as the European Union's biggest export market in the world, as good a deal. My goodness me, if Switzerland could have one, we could have an even better one. I do find it amazing that this guy has been brought onto a program despite all the lies that he said. And yet, when he's finally being held to account, they shut down the conversation because it seems that the mainstream media will not talk about Brexit and neither will the political parties. Leave your thoughts in the comments. Once again, I want to say a big, big thank you to everyone who supports this channel. You really do help it go and grow. My aim is to get 100 members supporting the channel by the end of the year. That will enable the channel to keep on going and growing. And for becoming a member, you'll get exclusive access to material that I do not release anywhere else online. Once again, thanks for listening. Bye for now.